Howdy! Tubal Kane again at your service. Today is a continuation of the last video tips and uh, we covered dovetails and how to measure them and uh, talked about them somewhat and today we're going to cut a dovetail and uh, this is actually the finished project here as I'm I uh, completed that yesterday and now I'm doing the introductory to the video so we're making a thread stop. Now that's a commercially made one at least I believe that's what it is I don't know where I got it and it it seems to fit an atlas lathe but we're gonna make uh, a dovetail thread stop and it's gonna fit a South Bend 9 inch lathe and we're gonna cover a little bit of math and how to measure that there was way too much math in the last video so I don't want to do that again but I, I have to touch on it again because any way you figure it you got to do some measuring and a machinist and a tool maker has to be somewhat adept at uh, mathematics and a little bit of trig but you don't have to get very far into it it's just the first week of trig and the first week of algebra but it is necessary so that's the theme for today. Now this is what we're making. We're making the thread stop. And this is a picture or a page out of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book. And we're on page 78 of this edition. And we're making that little part that goes onto the dovetail of the cross slide. And what is a thread stop you ask? Well, Pause your video and read that if you are interested in making one or want to know what the thread stop is used for. There it all is. And this is all from this edition of South Bend How to Run a Lathe book. It's still winter here in Illinois, so I'm out in my unheated garage, and this is my 9-inch South Bend precision lathe. And we're going to make that thread stop that I just mentioned and uh, now we're going to move in for a close-up of that. Here's a sample of the dovetail that we're going to make that will serve as the thread stop and it's going to go on here like that. So we're going to measure the dovetail. Now the reason that we're measuring the uh, male dovetail and we're going to make a female dovetail is that there isn't any way to measure the female on here without taking the whole thing apart and then the gib would fall loose and I doubt that we would get an accurate measurement so we're we're measuring the male and going to make a female so the first thing you need to do is to check the depth but they actually call it the height in the formula so using a depth mic wipe it clean we don't want any chips or debris on there holding it down real tight with my finger and bring that down until it just barely touches don't jack the thing up and then you can take it off and read it and we are getting three hundred and fifty five thousandths the next step now is to measure here and we have to use dowels like I showed you in the other video if you haven't watched the other video on dovetails make sure that you do these are quarter inch hardened dowels you can use other sizes 5 16 or 3 8 would work too and the diameter of these would be used in the formulas but here is 0.250 again everything must be good and clean lay those into the do dovetails and I prefer to use a micrometer, but you can use your dial or your electronic caliper if you want. You get the old Mitotoyo out and measure across the dowel pins that are seated up into the dovetail. It's very important that there not be any damage to the dovetails also, or you'll get a false reading. So, with your mic, get your reading, and that reading is... 2.204 and it's called S in the formulas. My hands are getting cold so let's retreat to the warmth and sanctity of my basement workshop. We're down in the basement now and it's warm. Well 
here's the page that you'll recognize from the other video if you follow that and you know again we're back to a lot of math and we're not going to go through all of that again it's way too painful but I did do the math for my own self and came up with uh, these figures uh, for T and then Y and then in order to get the dimensions for the female we do have to go through this and uh, do a little algebra and ending up with uh, S being 1.248 which is d the desired size but we want to make it just a little bit bigger so we don't have to struggle with it and drive it on with a brass hammer so I finally decided to make it uh, you know 10 or 12 thousandths larger and this is the size that I'm going to try to cut the dovetail on the Bridgeport Mill and if you want any more information on that uh, on the math go back to the other video I doubt that there's anybody else in the entire world that's going to do this so you can fast forward through the math alrighty let's get started now rather than make it out of steel this one is made of steel I'm going to use aluminum just to expedite things uh, for the purposes of this video and it's three quarter inch square aluminum. I don't know what kind it is. I just had it in stock. I don't even know where to buy some of this. It's just stuff that I came up with, guys. It's been in my shop forever. Okay, and what I did uh, put uh, layout die on this uh, piece, and I've got uh, lines that I'm going to rough out before we get started with the actual dovetail. I'm going to saw that out most of it just rough saw it now you can mill it too but this goes real fast so I will meet you at the uh, milling machine uh, momentarily after I've sawed this out the work is now mounted in the Bridgeport vise and I have rough sawed that out that took less than three minutes and I stayed away from the lines the next thing I'm going to do is uh, remember that our height is 0 0.355 I'm going to take ever such a light finishing a cut across here then I will zero out my collar on the knee adjustment and I'm gonna bring her up to three hundred thousandths rough it out then I'm gonna raise it to the 355 and finish the cut to my lines and I hope to do it that quickly I'm in contact with the work. I'm going to zero out my collar on the knee. Three revolutions will be three hundred thousandths. One, two, and three, and that leaves me fifty thousandths for my finishing cut. Increasing my depth or height 50 thousandths off camera, and that will be the final size. Final depth, perhaps I should say.
Put your safety glasses on. Use a brush. Don't stick your fingers in there. Now this step is optional, but if you look at some commercially done uh, uh, dovetails, such as on this uh, Aloris product, you're going to see that they have uh, supplied some relief right here. Tips of my scriber. I'm going to do that. I like the appearance of it as well. So I put some uh, dye on here and a couple layout lines. They're just quarter inch in from the, uh, from the ends. That dimension isn't very critical at all. And I've already increased my depth by ten thousandths. And I'll just mill that out and it'll, I put bluing on there so that it will highlight it. The tripod is in my way, and that's why you see things jiggling here a little bit. So I'll do the rest of that off camera, and you'll see it in the next clip. <laughs> 